Hello everyone. In this lesson, we will continue to learn about Sublime Text. In particular, we will learn how to manage multiple files, or what is typically referred to as a project. Let's get started. All right, let's imagine that I've been working on a website and I've stored all of its files in a folder named Example Project. When it comes time for me to work on this website again, I don't want to open each individual file manually in Sublime Text. Instead, I want to open the folder as a whole. If you are using a Mac, the easiest way to open a folder in Sublime Text is to simply drag that folder into the dock icon for Sublime Text. If you are using Windows, when you first open Sublime Text and you're presented with an empty screen, you can then drag a folder on top of that screen. Or you can always use the File Open option. Now, once we've opened a folder, we will see that Sublime Text features a sidebar. We can click on the name of the folder in the sidebar to expand the menu and see all of the folder's contents. We can now open any file by simply clicking on it. So here is the index.html file. Let's imagine that I'm interested in opening a CSS file. Now we can see that when I click on this main.css file, it looks like it's opening in a tab. So this part of the interface that I'm circling resembles a tabbed interface. So you might expect each new file that you click on to open in a new tab. However, when we're just single clicking on files, Sublime Text is really just previewing that file. And it won't start opening up independent tabs for each file until you either make some sort of edit to a file or if you double click a file in the sidebar. So I double clicked this main.css file. Now I will double click index.html. I'll double click a JavaScript file. And now you can see that we have separate tabs like you might expect. So this is great. We can very easily click files from the sidebar, open up as many different tabs as we need. Excellent. Except there's nothing fun or unique about this. This is how almost every text editor in the world works. So you must have known that a twist is coming. Uh, let's close these tabs. Let's kick things up a notch and now learn how to open files the sublime text way. So let's imagine that I want to open this index.html file, but I'm too lazy to use my mouse to click on it. <laughs> so instead, I can push Command P on my keyboard. If you're on Windows, that is Control P. And I can begin typing the name of the file that I'm interested in. Sublime Text will highlight the file that it thinks I want to open. In this case, it's correct. So I can just hit return or enter on my keyboard and I'm editing that file. So if I want to edit main.css, command P, start typing main. So as soon as I type in M, it already knows the right file. So I can just click enter and we're off to the races editing this file. Let's take things a step further. So let's imagine that I want to open a JavaScript file, uh, but to be more specific, I want my cursor to jump to a specific function in that file. So command P, I'm interested in main.js. So all I have to do is type M. It's the second option, so I can use the arrows on my keyboard. And now if I use the at symbol, I can begin to type the name of the function that I'm looking for, which is bar. So that's narrowed it down perfectly. Now if I hit enter, we can see that Sublime Text has highlighted this function declaration. My cursor is in just the right spot. I can begin coding. We're off to the races. And that at symbol trick works for much more than just function names. So if I want to search for a specific selector or class in my CSS file, command P main.css, let's use the at symbol. And let's imagine we're interested in the banner selector. So I can just type dot and even just a few letters. Sublime Text knows what I'm looking for. If I hit enter, it highlights that selector. My cursor's in just the right spot. I can begin coding. Now, this may not seem that impressive with such small text files, but in the real world, your text files will be hundreds of lines long. So the ability to jump to a specific file, to a specific selector or function is just amazing. So we've learned that the at symbol lets us jump to a function or a CSS rule. Uh, now let's learn how to jump to just a simple search result. So let's imagine that we're interested in index.html. So we can begin to type it simply I for index. Now we can use the pound or hash symbol. And now if I begin to type hello, 
uh, we can see there's only one result. And if I hit enter, we can see that it puts my cursor on the line of text that reads, hello world. So the pound symbol lets us jump to a search result very quickly. Now let's imagine that we want to open a file and then jump to a particular line number. So I'm interested in the JavaScript file main.js. So command P M for main. I can cycle through the list of results. This is the one I want. Now we can use the colon to search for a line. So now I just enter a number. I want to hop to line 16. Hit enter. Boom. We're on that line. The ability to jump to a specific line is really handy when you're debugging code. Now before we move on to something different, I want to show you one last thing to consider when you're using the command P or control P menu. You don't have to use this to search for a new file to open. So we can use this even within the file that we're already in. So let's imagine that we're in this JavaScript file and this file is actually 500 lines long and there's 50 functions in this file. So we can use command P, just begin our search query with the at symbol, and then we can use our keyboard to jump through or to quickly navigate through all of the functions. Now, this isn't that impressive <laughs> since our demo file only has two functions, but I think you get the idea. So you can see behind this command P window that when I use my arrow keys to switch between the search results, it's actually highlighting that function in real time. So you can imagine that if our file was much bigger, Sublime Text would be actively scrolling to the correct part of the file. And this would be a great way to sort of see a skeleton list of all of our functions at an overview very quickly, just by using the up and down arrow keys. All right, so that's enough on the command or control P menu prompt for now. Let's change gears. I want to rapidly show you four more tips that you can use when you're managing Sublime Text projects. So speedy tip number one. Let's imagine that you've made changes to a really important file. And before you save your progress, before you save your changes, you want to make sure that you're happy with what you've done. So if we right click anywhere in the text editor window and click show unsaved changes, this diff window pops up. We can scroll down and we see a summary of what we removed and what we've added. When you're done, you can just hit the escape key to close that diff window. Speedy tip number two, you can use the sidebar to create new folders or new files. So just right click on any folder and then you can create a new file or a new subfolder within that folder. Speedy tip number three, don't think of the sidebar as a file tree view for a single parent folder. Instead, think of the sidebar as a canvas for your project. So for example, we initially opened this parent example project folder by dragging it onto Sublime Text. But for certain projects, you will want to be editing different files from all sorts of different locations. So on my desktop, this is the folder that we've been working with, example project. But let's imagine that there were important files in this templates folder as well. So I can drag this templates folder into the sidebar and now it's part of my project as well. So I have really quick access to these files. Speedy tip number four. If you have dragged multiple parent folders into the sidebar and you're thinking to yourself, hmm, I really like this collection of folders that I've put together. I don't want to lose this. So in a week when I need to work on this project again, I don't want to have to reopen all of these folders. I want some sort of way to remember this work environment. If that's the case, this is where sublime projects come into play. So in the menu at the top, go to project and then click save project as. I will save this project to my desktop. I will name it Hooray. And the extension is obviously dot sublime project. So save. Now let's pretend that I close out sublime text. I actually quit the application. Let's pretend that it's a week later and I want to reopen that project. Let's fire up sublime text. Oh no, it's a blank screen. Oh, all we have to do is go to project open recent. You can either find the name of the project here, or you can actually click open project and navigate to that project file we saved. I think nine times out of 10, you can probably just use the recent menu though. And there you go. These are the familiar files that we've been working with. It's that easy to create and load projects. And that will bring this lesson to a close. I hope you feel like you learned something. In our next lesson, we will learn about a sublime text feature named the command palette. 
This is where the true power of Sublime Text will begin to shine through. It should be a lot of fun. I'll see you then. The lesson you just watched is a part of my web development workflow course. The course covers Sublime Text, SAS architecture and organization, Git, Grunt, Bower, and more. And we use all of this to build a modern website together. The lessons that are about a single tool will be available for free on YouTube. And the lessons where we really sink our teeth into something or see how two or three tools are coming together or maybe write a bit of custom CSS or JavaScript together will be part of the premium course. If you want to be notified when the premium course is released, you can sign up via the description for this video. Or if you're watching this video in the future, the course has been released and you can find a heavily discounted coupon code in the description for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.